everybody. I pray this video finds you blessed. This week I have a piece of walnut, a crotch piece. It was sent to me and again this is one of those pieces that got kind of lost in the uh, shuffle of transitioning into my new woodshed. So I apologize that I do not know exactly who sent this to me. If this looks familiar to you please put in the comments below and I thank you so very much. So I knew this was going to be a piece that I was probably going to have to add resin to. I was kind of hoping not because, um, you know, I, I like turning just regular wood. I also enjoy doing resin as well, but it's nice when you can uh, showcase a piece without having to add anything to it and just allowing the wood to speak for itself. I knew this would have some interesting grain, at the very least, because of the fact that it's a crotch piece. There was a huge spot in it that was um, really rotten and a couple other questionable areas where bugs have uh, made their home. This wood is on the dry side. It's not 100% dry by any means, but mostly the moisture is in this rotten uh, area. Decided to do resin and I'm trying to just um, chisel out a lot of the um, areas where it's really really moist and for this piece because I knew it was wet resin doesn't like water whatsoever so I figured I would try using the fast set resin and just coating the inside of that 
wrought area before I filled it to kind of prevent, you know, put a barrier between the wet wood underneath and the resin I was about to pour. I figured if I was going to get any kind of bubbles or um, weirdness going on with the resin because of the moisture, that would be closer to the areas where it, it wouldn't matter, deep into the piece where I'm not going to um, see it or just turn all that away. And to my surprise, it worked beautifully. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not supposed to work with pieces that are wet. So just keep that in mind if you try to do this method that you may get um, you may get varying results. It may work, may not work. Depends on how much moisture is in the piece. Um, a faster set resin or a CA glue uh, you could also use to seal that. Um, put a moisture barrier between the resin you're going to pour and uh, the piece of wood. I like using this method um, of filling holes in pieces. Uh, it, I feel like if I casted this, there would be a lot of wasted resin that I would have to turn away. Um, so being able to glue a mold straight to the piece is really nice. For turnings that you're not going to put your pieces in the pressure pot, normally I would recommend the thick set, the 3 to 1, because it's a slower set and it allows the air bubbles to kind of um, release before curing. But this piece... Um, it wasn't too much of a concern. I sealed it up with the fast set prior, so my thought process was that I'm not really going to need something that's, you know, sets pretty slow.
I didn't hollow this out as thin as I possibly could. It was getting pretty tough once I started getting into the um, more rotten areas. The I couldn't turn it really fast because of the unevenness and it would just bounce off of those um, big kind of gaps that were in there because of the rotten wood. So I just felt that because I wasn't really much getting anywhere uh, because of all the bouncing that I decided to just kind of um, take what I could get, I guess. So this piece is kind of heavy because of the fact it's not hollowed down all the way. And I'm showing you here the, the kind of pits and holes and in, in the rough parts inside. I did fill some of those off camera with some facet resin uh, just so that way when I coated the inside that it wouldn't just be a gaping um, hole in there. And there was a few other holes. So the bark, I really loved this movement and this, and this look. Um, so I decided to just torch it. Obviously make sure you have um, a fire extinguisher or, or some means of being able to put out a fire, you know, in your shop when you're doing this, cause this stuff is very dry and it catches very easily. Um, yeah, but it really adds an awesome, Some maker coins from Bob Cook. You probably have seen me use them in other videos. I really like them because it doesn't hide all of the beautiful green going on underneath of them, and you can still see who made it. The backs of them, where they're engraved, you can color or paint, 
whatever colors you want to fill in those letters, which is really cool. It gives you the opportunity to customize the fill color with your name to the piece. And this one I used a sage green from the Arteza's metallic sets. Howdy everybody. I pray this video finds you blessed. Ta-da! Look how beautiful that walnut crotch piece turned out. I love this feathering. I had some issues with the second coat and the finish because it cooled off like dramatically outside and in the shop like overnight. Um, it still, I put it inside for a little bit to try to get it to, I don't know, uh, finish curing, but I used the fast, the fast set on here and because of the cold, it kind of gives it like I mean, I don't mind the finish, but it kind of gives it like a hazy gloss, not necessarily like a satin, I guess. Um, I'm probably gonna take some wax to it and buff it a little bit because it seems to, I don't know, it's like a dulled down finish. Uh, this morning it was still tacky and I put the coat on it two days ago, my final coat, I think two days ago. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's what's going on with the finish. I put uh, my little maker coin, acrylic maker coin. Even that seems to be a little on the foggy side. I think the it was just too cold outside, and I probably should have let the resin kind of warm up a little bit and maybe even put my heater up uh, next to it while it was curing, but it was just so darn cold. So just be cautious when using um, resin as a finish that the temperature, it does matter. It matters when you're mixing it, it matters the temperature that you're starting off with, the resin itself when you're mixing it. Uh, I love this leathered, it looks like old uh, roughed leather uh, on, on this surface. I, I kind of originally wanted to do a resin rim, but because of the um, live edge that I chose to do it, uh, it ended up making that a little difficult. I thought introducing the, um, the smoothness and the, and the prettiness of the wood into this rough leather look and then back into the smooth with the resin and all this beautiful wood grain. But this one, I was pleasantly surprised. My idea of putting that facet in there first uh, did help that resin to adhere and no issues at all. My roosters are at it again. What do you know? <laughs> Anyways, it's really heavy because I had a hard time getting this thing hollowed out because of all of the rottenness. Um, my hollowing tool just wanted to bounce like crazy all in the inside. So it is not perfect by any means. It's not even hollowed out as much as I could have hollowed it out. It's, uh, it's, decently thin around in here but everywhere else it's it's pretty thick it's a pretty heavy piece i mean this this could be used as self-defense <laughs> for sure it's it's a pretty heavy piece but all in all um it looks great uh that it has of course all of its wonderful imperfections but i'm going to choose to look at the beauty that the wood has to offer uh especially all of this this beautiful grain and the just how amazing all of that swirling and the feathering from the crotch I might have shown you that already <laughs> there's an eyeball right there it's an eyeball <laughs> anywho um thank you so much whoever sent me that walnut i think it may have been tabitha like i said transitioning from a woodshed to another woodshed things got mixed up and labels got pulled off and and whatnot so i apologize i think each and every one of you who sent me stuff even though i'm unsure right now a lot of <laughs> what i have out there that was sent to me i'm unsure some of it i wrote the names on directly onto the pieces of wood and others um they didn't i didn't catch it in time so i apologize unfortunately i failed I failed in that department. So thank you whoever gave me this crutch piece of walnut. If y'all like my hat, look at that. Sorry, there's dog fur on it. Um, if you have animals in the house, you can't have anything black. So I ordered it from Organic Crafts, sent them over my logo, and they put that right on there. They have several different patches. My kids and my husband, we all have different colored patches with my name on it um, or with my logo on it. 
which is really, really cool. I love these things. And oh my gosh, perfect timing. They keep my head nice and warm. So go check out Organic Crafts. I'll put the link for his Etsy store below. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I pray you all have a wonderful weekend. Take care and God bless.